Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, let's go over custom widgets, methods, and padding. So we're gonna lump all this stuff together because it's the pretty simple but super important, okay? Let's talk about padding first, okay? So padding, I didn't really understand it and I actually misunderstood it before, so I wanna clarify this and I'm sorry about that. It's still a work in progress, right? Um, so what I thought padding was, was I have a widget here and the padding was the space and where I put the widget in space with respect to the screen okay it's not what it is if we look at this so same thing material app home new scaffold here i'm going to put a floating action button remember that button in the right lower quad um right lower corner what padding says is that padding has to do with the space of the child widget with respect to the widget which you are adding the padding for Okay, so in other words, the widget is floating action button. Well, actually, the widget is new raised button, excuse me, new raised button. And the child widget is, I'm sorry, just I'll go over this in a second. It's a text. It's text press me. So raised, new, a raised button and a text inside of there is the child widget. What padding has to do with is the padding is the child widget with respect to the widget of padding. Okay, so what it will do, maybe it'll make a little bit more sense in a couple seconds here, okay? That's what it actually is. It's how much space do you add in top of here. It doesn't move the child widget around. It simply pushes space, puts padding in between this uh, around you, okay? So let me go through a couple things. So here, it's defined by new edge insets. That's just, I, I don't know what inset actually means, if it's a word at all, but but basically it says the space in between the child widget and the um, parent widget, all right? And it says insets dot all. So in other words, all over the place, top, left, top, right, bottom, it will be 1.0 pixels or at least a default. So it can't get, there's only so small it can get, you can't make the widget go all the way up to the, the child widget. So if we look at this, it's basically saying put some a little bit of extra padding all over symmetrically all the same distance around the press me which is the child widget see see that so if i put a bigger number here put a 10 if we watch it that doesn't change much if i put a 20 it's um th again there's a default amount inside of there which you can't go underneath so it, it now it starts to get bigger because now there's 20 pixels here and 20 pixels here, okay? And um, if I add, keep going up the line, so you notice what it's doing. It's actually adding padding, adding space all around it. It's not shifting the location. So it's not pushing it here, pushing here or anything like that. All it's doing is it's adding space. So now if we start adding like, let's just say 300 or something like that, now we start to get weird behavior. Like what's going on? Well, it's probably somewhere around here because the whole entire um, widget, the new the raised button widget, is all over the place. All right, so so that's what actually happens. All right, so what other methods do we have with um, um, edge insets? Well, we have symmetric, and what symmetric just means is that you want the same. It's either horizontal or vertical. So I'm going to say horizontal and I'm going to say 20, point zero. So horizontal, let's make it 30 to make it a little bit more visible. Well, let's make it 40, make it a little bit more visible. Okay, so 40 pixels here, 40 pixels here, but this is the default. I think it's 10 pixels up and down in the vertical. Okay, so the horizontal, it's 40 pixels. So that's your way of saying, okay, I want a little bit extra padding so that it looks a little bit better, depending on what you like for your looks. You can use add vertical here too. And I'm gonna say that should be 30, not quite 40. So it's a little bit wider than it is taller. Hey, I like something like that. And, and that's what I can do as well. All right. If you want it completely different, you want that amount of padding, that amount of space that you put in for the child widget. Um, I don't know what from window padding is. I, I'm not, or only, I'm not done with all of these things. I still have to learn in, in what these are. But what this is, is from left, top, right, bottom. 
So left, right, top, bottom, these are doubles. So from the left, I want, um, let's say 30.0. From the top, I want um, 2.3. And for the right, I want 50.5. And the bottom, I want 25.3. Okay, so I'm gonna like that um, from the right, from the left, I want that to be 60 to make it a little bit more apparent, okay? So 60 here, the top is two, the right is 50, and the bottom is 25. Actually, I'm gonna change that to 0 0.1 just to see what it looks like. Oh, it does actually shrink it a little bit right there. Okay, great. So if I look like that appearance, then I'm going to use that. Okay, so that's what padding actually is. I hope that's clear. So let's go back to dot all, and I'm just gonna say uh, 25. Let's just do that. Eh, close enough, so I like that one, all right? Now, let's keep going on. On pressed, so that's the method before we did null. What, we, what we're gonna do here, so this is a function reference, right? And what I'm gonna say is, so here is the at override, the widget build. I'm gonna make another method in the same class, okay? It has to be in the same class, or it has to be injected or something like that in order for this to actually see it, right? So I'm gonna say something, and I'm just gonna say print high. So whenever I click on it, it's gonna print high. So I click on it, and it prints high right around here, okay? Very simple because we don't really, we haven't learned any other methods. You know, we could do a lot of methods here. We haven't learned anything else, so I can't really do anything too complicated. So I'm gonna start with this. That's just the idea of it, where to actually put it. Nothing new, but again, this is a new framework, so it's always good to review. Lastly, child widgets. So here's the child right here. It's a press me button. So I'm gonna create my own custom widget. All right, it's gonna be super simple. It's the same concept as here. But notice here, I had to do a material app because that's the base, right? I don't really need to do a material app here, right? Because all I'm not doing a, I don't, I don't wanna create a background screen or anything like that. I don't wanna create the environment of the material app, nor do I wanna scaffold. All I want is a text. For some strange reason, I didn't wanna put it here, maybe for, I want to change it in the future. Maybe it's easier to read or something. I'm just making it more modular, whatever. I'm going to say press me button extends stateless widget because we haven't learned stateful widgets yet. Same override, and I'm going to return a new text and saying press me. So when the child is press me button, it's going to import this right inside here. Import's the wrong word. It's going to use this um, class right here, which is a widget, and it's, it's a text widget. And it's going to put it right inside here. And the child is going to be that information right inside of here. So you could have put anything. You could have put an image or something like that inside of there. Okay. So super simple, creating our own class. We're creating our own widget just like that. And so we're gradually starting to get the concept, I hope. At least I think I am. Um, hopefully I won't be hitting another wall soon. Again, the, the concept of what's going on inside there. How to use widget, widgets within widgets, child widgets, parent widgets, widgets to give um, information. So in other words, give information like give properties um, to the widgets. And then we're going to have custom widgets that can be used by the widgets, not just the built-in ones, but the ones that we create for ourselves. All right, so let's keep going on and uh, go from there. Thanks.